Sonic 1 was a great starting point to the series, not only to the gameplay but also the style that we could expect in future installments. Sonic 2 built upon that foundation and vastly improved on it in pretty much every conceivable way. So did Sonic 3 and Knuckles improve on perfection? In some ways I felt like it kept it and in others I felt like it degraded it. In the hell is wrong with people? Look, people are allowed their own goddamn opinions. I think I'll uh, keep this for the rest of the review just in case. It's not to say that it's a bad game, very much Sonic 3 is a good game. But when I compare it to Sonic 1, 2 and even CD, I feel like it kind of takes a few steps back from what was working so well in the previous games. And this is coming from a lifelong Sonic the Hedgehog fan. To reiterate, this is a great game. I'm combining both Sonic 3 and Knuckles together as that was the original plan before it got split. It plays like Sonic, still looks like Sonic and sounds like Sonic, so why do I not enjoy this as much as the others? Let's take a look at each area independently. First off, the graphics. For a late generation Mega Drive game, Sonic 3 takes all the colours and details that have been shown off before and ramps them up considerably. This is evident right from the start on Angel Island all the way to the Doomsday Zone at the end. The gorgeously detailed backgrounds- saw that one coming, yeah. The gorgeously detailed backgrounds really do stand out even if you're meant to be speeding past them for the majority of the time. There's only really a few levels that don't seem to have that same level of polish applied to them but all in all it is a really beautiful game. The same can be said for the sprite work, with enemies and bosses all bigger and more unique than ever. There's even throwbacks to older badnik designs which is a nice touch. If I have to bring one design into question though it's Sonic himself. That Sonic 2 design was perfect, sleek and simple but able to be expressive. Sonic 3 Sonic doesn't have that same aura to me though. Whether it's the idle animations or movement, something just seems kind of off with it. Tails looks fine, Knuckles is new so there's no base comparison for him, so I don't know if there was another reason for the change. It's not a game breaker, but it is one thing that's always bugged me since release. And can we just quickly talk about the box arts while we're on the subject? I'm glad we never got the US image over here, but why couldn't we have ever had the Japanese box art for each game? Sonic and Chums have not only had a visual upgrade, but a gameplay upgrade as well. Tails can now finally fly, albeit for a short period of time. This does allow him and Sonic to reach places that were unaccessible to them before. This can be especially handy in two player mode, where now thankfully the second player actually has something to do rather than just lagging behind, so it does involve a bit of cooperation. Knuckles being the new echidna on the block can smash through rocks and other breakable objects allowing him passage to routes unavailable to the others. He can also climb walls super slowly and glide in the air allowing for, like Tails, a lot of exploitation in the level design if you get high enough. Sonic on the other hand gains the ability to create a shield which I don't think I've ever used without it being an accident. It's such a brief window it appears that timing on purpose is more trouble than just dodging out the way. So whilst he's had a modest tweak, the power-ups themselves have had a major overhaul and they're pretty game breaking. The original shield is now gone and been replaced with three new power-ups, all which can be attained throughout each level and even in bonus stages. They all have their trade-offs for being a shield, but at the end of the day, much like Sonic 1 and 2, it's better to have a shield than not have one at all. There's the water shield, a bubble that gives you unlimited air when submerged, but also lets you bounce in and out of water, handy to quickly stop your momentum in the air but can be annoying to use otherwise. The flame shield provides protection from fire, which is probably the most useful ability out of all the shields given the amount of environmental hazards and enemies that use it. You can also blaze forward in the air which is a great way to not only gain speed but clear gaps if you're a little short on distance. Finally there's the lightning shield, it attracts all nearby rings so it's great for gathering and trying to rack up extra lives. You also have a small double jump which, much like the flame shield, is handy for those mistimed jumps and evading attacks. Unlike the water shield though, both the flame and lightning would disappear when you touch water, which does make sense but can be frustrating when you've only just picked one up and instantly lose it. Being able to take the extra hit without losing your rings is always going to be a super helpful thing to have, but having some of these shields in certain areas or bosses make them completely trivial. So depending on your view, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. For me, having a shield in Sonic 1 and 2 meant I could be a little bit more aggressive in my playstyle, but having them in Sonic 3 and Knuckles pretty much removes any challenge, especially for some of the later bosses. I know you can decide to not pick them up or just get hit to remove them if you do, but they're pretty overpowered if you choose to use them. The zones are also a mixed bag. Much like Sonic 2, their scope and scale seems bigger and more ambitious than ever. They exemplify the zone names perfectly, from Hydro City to Ice Cap and Carnival Night to Mushroom Hill. They also change up the obstacles per act, which work well with the visual change along with the mini bosses that reflect the zone well. But aside from the looks, I can't say I'm a fan of most of the actual level layouts. There are lots of memorable parts like the one rail snowboarding and ice cap or the spiral staircase in Sky Sanctuary. Overall I don't find that they have the same fun factor as some of the levels from previous games and some of them can just be downright annoying. I'd hedge a bet and say that most people dislike Sandopolis, and I would join them in that. Whether it's the sand ramps that loop you around, the pointless mid-boss at the end of Act 1, or everyone's favourite gameplay exercise in time gates and switches, the level is a complete chore. 
Same goes for parts of Hydra City, Flying Battery, and others though in far less capacity. It's a shame as obviously the levels are a pretty main part to the game, so when they're either easily sped through with little to no challenge, or drag on waiting for platforms and the like, it's hard to find an enjoyable balance. There's also a lot of levels when you combine the two games together, so it doesn't equal out well. Probably my biggest gripe with the game comes from this. One thing I can't say is not balanced is the music, it's completely top notch. As always, the tunes are completely stellar, even if the level is less than. They probably help me continue through some of the levels because of just how good they are compared to the actual level itself. The bonus levels and special stages have all been changed too. Passing a star post with a certain amount of rings will determine which bonus you now go to. It's a slot machine, but with elements of the original special stage from Sonic 1, so it's irritating as hell. There's a gumball machine that drops power-ups every time you flip the switch whilst you bounce off the edges. And there's an electric ball stage where you fling yourself up towards the top and grab rings and power-ups before you get hit by the beam that chases you. All by the slot machine are fun breaks from the action, but it is annoying hitting a post with only one or two rings short of one of the enjoyable bonus levels. The actual special stages themselves look great for Mega Drive standards, as they give off a SNES Mo7 style as you run around a spherical map collecting blue orbs and rings without hitting red ones. You can access them by finding giant rings hidden throughout the level. Collect all the blue orbs and you earn yourself a Chaos Emerald. Snag them all and you get to be supersonic again. When you enter Mushroom Hill though for the first time, you see Knuckles sneaking around a switch. Press it and enter the area he was in to find a giant glowing ring. This transports you to where the Super Emeralds are, and removes any Chaos Emeralds you have, also removing your supersonic ability. Now, you have to beat each of the Super Emerald stages in order to get the ability back, although if you do, you get an even better form, Hypersonic. He's more invincible before, if that was possible, and it once again has an impact on the ending, although this time it does lead to a true final battle in space. A much better reason and payoff for the effort it takes to get them all. Considering you now have save files and with the amount of levels that are in this game, it does mean that you do have a much greater chance of finding one of these rings and also more opportunities to obtain the emeralds. I'm also glad there is a better reward for finding them all other than just now being supersonic or hypersonic and just changing the slight bit at the end. It does also require you to explore the levels far more so it does add to the gameplay time. But the first time you enter some of them they're a complete pain and you can't enter a ring you've already been in, the only way you can do that is by restarting the level again. So if you're not good at memorising map layouts then it becomes an utter nightmare. Two player mode is back and has changed the laps of smaller reworked levels with a choice between a Grand Prix, Match Race or a Time Trial. In one way it's better than Sonic 2, as it's a bit fairer for people who haven't memorised the levels that are used in that. In another though, I actually prefer some of these levels to the levels in the main game, even though they're just short little loops. Can I start with this? Can I just give my final thoughts like Jerry Springer? Awesome, All right. So in conclusion, I do like Sonic 3, so don't get me wrong, it is not a bad game. I just find that there's more things that I criticise about it than I do with Sonic 1, 2 and CD. If I was to judge them as separate games, I'd much rather play Sonic and Knuckles, so the levels in Sonic 3 don't really do it for me even though the music's outstanding. Although Sandopolis can go to hell, screw that zone. I know this game does have the vast majority of people's opinions that it is the best Sonic the Hedgehog game, and it certainly did get a lot of praise when it came out, and I'm not discrediting any of that whatsoever. It's just not the best Sonic game for me. Considering that my mind was made up when Sonic the Hedgehog 2 came out, anything after that was always going to be a tough act to follow. But that's just my stupid opinion as to why I think this is not as good as what everyone else seems to think it is, and why I'm probably going to end up with a lot of abusive comments as to why I'm wrong. But what's your opinion on Sonic 3 and Knuckles? Do you love it as much as everyone else, or can you at least see some of the faults I've raised, even though I'm probably being completely biased because of my love for Sonic the Hedgehog 2? Drop a comment below with your opinion and try to be civil about it. We all love Sonic the Hedgehog, not everyone has to have the same opinion. Leave a like if you can at least appreciate that. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Any support really does help this channel out. But I've been Tom for Victor Pose Gaming, thanks for watching and have a great gaming day. Right then, why the hell did I park my car? What's wrong with you people? People are allowed to like different things.